السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته our dear viewers بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم uh, welcome to our program on this blessed day the day of Arafah 9th of Dhul Hijjah I'd, uh, I'd like to welcome all of the viewers and I'd also like to welcome our esteemed guests Sheikh uh, Zaid Adib uh, in the executive director of the Office of Institutional Research, and he's a returning uh, guest, Al Huda. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We also have uh, two guests here with us, uh, Brother Zakir Ahmed, a student from New York uh, City, and uh, studying Arabic in Egypt, and uh, Brother Mustafa Yusuf, who is also a student here doing his master's degree. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the program. Uh, before we continue uh, talking about this blessed day, uh, we'd like to share with you a message from uh, Arafah, from our correspondent uh, in Arafah right now, uh, Brother Malik, and we'll cut to that video and come back shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome back. Uh, that was Brother Malik from uh, Arafah this morning and the sun at the sunrise. Um, and you can obviously see how happy he is to be there. And it's quite an experience for those who have been. They understand this this feeling, almost like an unexplainable feeling when you're there uh, on this most important day for the Hajjaj, which is which is the day of Arafah. And for those who haven't been. Uh, you can you can ask anybody about uh, Hajj and especially the day of Arafah, and they will. You can automatically see this this profound feeling that they've had and memories that they've had about this day. Um, this day, Allah Azza wa Jal chose in this blessed month and in the these ten blessed days, as in uh, Surah Al-Fajr, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, Wal-Fajr wa Layl al-Ashr. And Allah Azza wa Jal chose this day, uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that this day, if you fast, uh, it expiates your sins for the past year and the year uh, ahead. And that's for the people who haven't made it to Arafah. Uh, and it's because this day is a blessing from Allah for those who are visiting uh, Arafah, uh, the, the Holy Land, and he also, from his mercy and blessings, gave it to the rest of uh, the Muslims who haven't been able to make it over there. So, uh, to begin, 
I'd like to just, if you can share with us some of the benefits of uh, the day of uh, Arafah for the fasting. But before that, uh, we were speaking earlier about uh, why Arafah itself, the location, why is it special? Uh, and you had shared something with me that I'd like you to share. Yes. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu wa-salam wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala. Uh, Arafah, according to uh, authentic hadith from Abu Yala and Al-Bazar and Ibn Hibban, is the place that Allah chose for Adam and Eve to become reacquainted after they were departed from Jannah. And actually they descended in two different places on the plain of Arafah. And because of the nihmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they recognize one another. And this is the progenitors of all of the human beings here on the planet. And, you know, it really comes back to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, that the most beneficial thing to do on Arafah, whether you're there or you're at home, is to recite the kalimatul uh, or tawheed, you know, la ilaha illallah wa'akluhu la sharika la lahu mulk lahu ham wa huwa ayla kulli shayin kadir and this is a statement in English that means there's nothing worthy of worship but Allah alone he has no partners and no associates and he has power over everything and this is a reminder of our state on Arafah of ubudiya, of servitude, of slavehood. And, you know, if you look at the hujaj today, the men, everybody is in two pieces of white cloth. And there's absolutely no way to tell who is rich, who is poor, who's had a good life, who's had a hard life because of the equality of Ubudiyah, that Allah has signified Arafat as the day Absolutely. for Ubudiyah. <clears throat> Allah for. And, you know, it's just, for me, not having made Hajj, made Umrah, but not having made Hajj, this program and watching Huda TV and the other Islamic channels this week, it really made me think that the intention to make Hajj has to be so profoundly personal and internal mm. that you prepare for it in a practical way and in a spiritual way, simultaneously. Absolutely. And, you know, it just uh, uh, occurred to me that if people are near the means for Hajj, but they have to stretch for a little more effort, you know, the archway cookies that you buy every, every week, right. you may just need to not buy those archway cookies and put that money into a bank account. This is one of the things that you definitely would want to uh, save up for. Yes. And I think uh, one of the benefits of having uh, these uh, scenes on television constantly, especially in a, in a Muslim country, is that your heart is drawn to, to what you see. When yeah. you see these people, it's so, it's so natural that you haven't been there, you haven't you know, felt it, but you're naturally drawn to, to what they're doing. And you, you're yearning to go there and, 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 and be with those people uh, and every year you want to this is the time to really make the niya for next year or for the future but st like you said stick to it and plan yes. practically yes. don't just say oh inshallah and then you're not saving money because it, it does it is expensive it does have uh, you need to be uh, physically able uh, and uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to do it's, a, it's an actual to walk on Allah Allah is stuck down as bad absolutely you know depend on Allah but use the means. Use the means. And I have to blame myself. You know, it's, it's, it's the qadr of Allah. And Allah will bring you there when you're, when you're supposed to be there. But I was uh, watching it with my sons. And they were like, you know, when are we going? <laughs> 
And it has to be really a very focused spiritual and practical endeavor simultaneously. And it, this is very true. And subhanAllah, when you hear stories constantly about people who have made the niyyah and they're having difficulty putting together the money, putting together the plans, and then uh, Allah Azawajal, you know, just makes it easy for them. No. Just out of nowhere you find yeah. these stories that, you know, the, the way actually I went to Hajj was almost uh, accidental. <laughs> and uh, I really wanted to go, and it, w it happened, you know, very fast, and it happened, but this was a, a long time ago, and, and it happened very fast for me, and it was, it was truly, uh, you know, miraculous that I went there because Where'd of the you? short... <laughs> yeah, and it, it was almost like, you know, when you go there, you, you feel like Allah Azawajal is inviting you there. So yes. it's, you really feel like uh, you're in the house of Allah Azawajal, and you're personally invited uh, by Him. Uh, and inshallah, for those who haven't made it, uh, we ask Allah to make it easy for them and to uh, bring them to Ameen. this place. I mean, um, so today is uh, the day of Arafah, and, and as we said, for the people who aren't uh, making Hajj and uh, the rest of the the Muslims, uh, you're supposed to be fasting as well as these ten days. You're supposed to increase in good deeds, and as is related in the Sahih al Bukhari. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said there's no deeds better than the deeds in these 10 days and the, uh, the companions uh, said not even jihad O Prophet of Allah and he said not even jihad unless you go out and you're spending your, uh, your money and your wealth and you come back with nothing yes. so this is such a wonderful gift and Allah is constantly giving us these opportunities uh, for us to increase uh, in our deeds and so my, my advice, and I'd like to see what your advice is, is to take advantage as much as possible uh, from this day that Allah Azawajal has blessed us with and has uh, given us instead of the day of Arafah, uh, the, the being at Arafah. So for those who have made it, they're getting so much benefit. And for those who haven't made it there, Allah Azawajal has given you um, uh, a copy of, of that with, with the mercy and the forgiveness. Uh, do you have... Do, would you like to share any uh, deeds that you would recommend for people, especially on a day like this, to take advantage of Allah Azawajal's mercy? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Well, as you mentioned, um, it is among the great uh, actions of a Muslim to fast on the day of Arafah. Um, since we are uh, physically not able to perform uh, hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deprive us of His mercy and forgiveness as uh, He comes down to the first, the nearest heaven and He forgives the people and He tells the, those who are in heaven that, you know, you see my uh, slaves, they came from far and near with hair disheveled, uh, you know, in hopes of, of my mercy and forgiveness while they did not see my punishment. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends His uh, mercy as He says in the Qur'an, wasi'at, that my mercy engulfs everything, it encompasses everything. So um, those of us who are not performing hajj, we have uh, the privilege to fast and gain this mercy and this maghfirah and rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, just fasting for one day, just a few hours, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins from last year and the coming year. SubhanAllah, such a great deal that Allah Azawajal is giving to us. Um, aside from all of that, we have, you know, um, very simple, um, you know, amal deeds that we can uh, we can do or perform, such as you know making dhikr with our tongue, saying La ilaha illallah, praising Allah, Alhamdulillah, glorifying Allah by saying Subhanallah, making the takbirat after the different salawat, um, reciting Quran, uh, trying to pray uh, our salah in in the masjid in jama'ah, uh, trying to give some sadaqa, helping those who are uh, in need of help, um, in a time where we learn the importance of sacrifice, sacrificing an animal and distributing it among those uh, you know, who don't really get to enjoy this luxury of meat um, among our relatives, our neighbors and so forth. Um, helping our family members, helping our moms with the you know, cooking uh, for Eid, um, you know, meals and so on. So all of these different uh, deeds we can really um, try to implement on this day and everything will be, like you said, multiplied as good deeds are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these uh, blessed 10 days. Barakallahu feek. Brother Mustafa, 
you, uh, amongst all of us, you've been in, in Egypt and in, in an Islamic environment, an Arabic environment. Uh, can you tell us about the, the, the feeling that you get here uh, when it comes to this day, when it comes to uh, the Eid itself? Because over uh, everywhere in the world, um, especially in, in the West, uh, of course, we they fast and they they have aid, but it's not a it's not a an entire community uh, of people or an entire nation of people. Yes. It, it, and there must be a, a different uh, feeling. So tell us about how it how it is here and how people celebrate and some of the traditions that they have here. So, alhamdulillah, I mean, yani, yeah, alhamdulillah, I was born in Egypt and I lived so all my life here, and I haven't been to the U.S. or the West uh, or the U.K. or whatever, uh, but. Alhamdulillah, I'm here in, in Egypt, we have this, like, as an Islamic country, you have the brothers, they always, like, remind you, they tell you, like, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, the way, like, to f they remind you fasting. You know, like, I came in the cab and the driver told me, bro, are you fasting today? <laughs> you know, like, just reminding me that today is a special day, that you should fast today, you should do the good deeds. Um, so, Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, this country, you know, they have the brothers around you, they remind you, they tell you the good, the, to do good deeds and they tell you about Islam and they, 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 they guide you to the right path. Uh, you know, also we have like, kind of like it's feelings, they are kind of like, I can't describe them actually, they, they, they reach the point that they are indescribable. They, you know, it's something inside, it's like... <coughs> What you have, especially on the day of Eid, and uh, the, the the people greet each other, uh, the happiness that is spread everywhere. You know, like people who know each other and who don't know each other, they meet each other, they greet each other, they remind each other of the blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the grace of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He has bestowed on us. Absolutely. So Alhamdulillah, yani, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very happy that I was born in this country and I lived here. Eid is, 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 is a special occasion, a very special occasion in Islamic uh, countries yani, uh, that I think you might be deprived of. But yes, inshallah, sir. you will share us I think this Eid, the, the, the <coughs> most basic, the most uh, deep s symbolic aspects of uh, Hajj is the brotherhood and that you cannot differentiate between the brothers that we're truly brothers for the sake of Allah brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah and the people who don't make it to Hajj and that are here and they're showing love for one another it really shows uh, you know it manif it's a manifestation of this true love for our brothers yeah. and everything about the Hajj everything about uh, these 10 days is symbolic of Tawheed and symbolic of this constant uh, unity between us just for the sake of Allah that we we are you know being driven we are being you know pointed into this direction uh, I wanted to ask if you have any also any other advice for people to take advantage of this uh, for this day Bismillah Alhamdulillah Salatu Wasalam Ayla Rasulillah This is one of the I was reading just before we came on yeah. air a statement from uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, uh, one of his essays called Ubudiyah. Uh, he said that one of the important things to remember about the servitude is Silatul uh, Rahim, hmm. is family ties. And, you know, this is a distinction that you find among the Muslims that you don't find among any other nation that we speak pay special attention to keeping the family ties and keeping this close connection and honoring this contribution, especially with our parents, you know, that labored hard to give us the foundation on which we stand today and any success that we have. And I'm not talking about you know, a bank account or an inheritance. Yeah. But character traits. Absolutely. Inclination towards doing the right thing. Or looking at something and looking at it with the right perspective. The great contribution, it came from some teacher. You know, and the best teacher was the parent. You know, and, and the extended family. And so, you know, this day of Arafat, where the family of the Muslims come together on the plain of Arafah 
and the family of the Muslims come together tomorrow at the Salatul Eid, you know, to sort of reconnect, re-embrace, look at each other with this warmth and this sincerity that It is, it is truly, uh, it's absolutely uh, heartfelt. And uh, when, you, when you realize what your parents have done for you and what it means to, to really connect with them, and, it's, and you, you find that meaning truly in these days. Uh, because y your parents might be around all, all the time and all year round and you don't connect with them and you don't see them uh, and things of that nature. And... Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, He shows us these, uh, these, these signs that, you know, uh, and of course the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us how important it is to connect to our relatives and to keep in close contact, and this is one of the, uh, the greatest uh, things that you can do. Uh, Especially if your parents have returned to Allah. Absolutely. You can look... <coughs> at the tremendous contribution that they gave you. And there's a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the meaning of English. Um, you don't know how, what is closer to you. Your parents or the love that you have for your offspring. And this is a connection that is unique to this reflection of Ubudiyah this day. That we should pay, you know, really close attention to rectifying mistakes that we have with people, forgiving, uh, you know. The Imam this morning at Fajr, he, he read the either call the Mina and Nas. Mm. You know, not <laughs> having <laughs> anger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <clears throat> and so this is one of the important things that, you know, we should pay attention to today. If there's somebody that you've had a riff with, go mend it. This is an excellent point. I was actually going to get to that point. Yes. Uh, I, I, this is one of those times, especially for the people in Arafah also, when you go make hajj and you're asking Allah to forgive you, uh, it's not enough that you're just asking Allah to forgive you. If you've, tr uh, you know, taken someone else's right, you make sure that you mend these ties. Mend. If you've taken something from someone, you you give it back to that person. You uh, make right what you've done wrong, and you ask Allah for forgiveness. And that the the fasting for the people who are not in Arafah um, is. It's just like the fast in Ramadan. You cannot do things that will make it, uh, you know, unacceptable. Right. It's not just a, the fact that you don't eat, <laughs> right, exactly. or drink. It's 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 a true, uh, you know, while you're fasting, you're asking Allah for forgiveness. You're, you know, you're reaching out to the people who you maybe you've you've uh, broken your ties with with your family. Uh, if you've harmed someone, if you owe someone something that you need to do. This is the best time to do it. And because uh, the atmosphere, right, the atmosphere, they are more uh, likely to even forgive you because of yes. just the, the feeling that's going around. So you might have done it another day. They might have rejected what, uh, you know, you reaching out to them. But because this is a blessed time, you should take advantage of it because Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, he is the controller of people's hearts and you don't know how people are going to react. You might have an idea, oh, this person will never, you know, never change. You'll always be doing these things and, mm -hmm. and he's a family member and we all have people in our family who do things that we might not, not agree with and we ask Allah to, uh, to guide them. Uh, but if we've had a rift for whatever reason, this is the perfect time to do it because again, the atmosphere and like you, you just watching uh, the the people in Arafah, you're just your you know your heart becomes softened, uh, and this is a perfect time to take. Brother Avengers. Mustafa said something that really stuck in my mind. You know, he said this indescribable feeling. Mm. I heard a shake uh, something I found on YouTube. Um, may Allah preserve him. Mm. He said. 
when we hear these reminders or something from the Quran or the Hadith it's amazing today of how little we are emotionally moved because we've lost this connection yes you know when you hear the Quran if you don't feel something something's wrong absolutely if you don't look at all of these millions of people today and it doesn't touch you something's missing there is something missing yeah. and uh I think when we were talking uh, outside about uh, symbolism and the entire uh, act of Hajj is full of symbolism, the Kaaba, the 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 we're, t we're talking about the simple. I was saying that the simplistic aspect of the Kaaba is so it's so simple and uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla has made it this way. It's not that it's. It's this grand, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing building. It's just this cube that, you know, uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla made it this, had it this way intentionally so that you have love for the Creator, yes. not, not the, the actual aspect of it. And even uh, in the Quran, when uh, Ibrahim is talking about the area itself, so the area of Mecca is not, it's not a beach, it's not, it's not... <laughs> doesn't have grass it it's not as you know it's not a place to go hang out with in and right so it's it's made this way so that your heart only is towards Allah so it's only for the love of Allah you're not there to relax and enjoy the weather and enjoy you know the the scenery it's only for Allah and it, it's made this way specifically and the meaning and the the signs and the symbols go on and on about as you mentioned, the, 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 the dress of the, uh, the pilgrims and the ihram and uh, <coughs> the walking and, and, and the standing in Arafah and, and all these symbols and stoning, of course, of the, uh, uh, the, the Jabrat. <coughs> uh, these are all symbolic and if people don't find the true meaning in this, they're not moved by this, this exactly. act, it's, it becomes useless. So exactly. this is really a perfect time to really try to understand the meaning and the depth behind what you're doing. It's not just an action. Exactly. And, and this is, I think, a phenomenon everyone can witness, that people do actions and they might even understand the meaning, but they don't actually feel the meaning. They don't understand, truly, you know, live the meaning of this uh, connection. And uh, a note I wanted to mention about the family. This is, it's such an important uh, topic that in every Eid, I think every Eid khutbah that I've heard specifies, you know, bringing happiness to your family, yes, for your yes. kids and stuff like that. Uh, it's such an important time for the kids and, you know, the relationship between the parents and the children. Um, and we come from uh, different parts uh, of the world and I wanted to ask uh, the brother uh, about the the differences that he finds this is your first uh, aid here yeah. in 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 Egypt mm -hmm. uh, coming from the states what um, what uh, things can you see here that are different than uh, than over there that have kind of maybe given you a little culture shock but it, in mm -hmm. a in a good way in a good way definitely um, coming from uh, the busiest place uh, in the planet from New York um, Alhamdulillah we do have a very large population of Muslims so um, during uh, Eid um, you know we do have our own share of fun and excitement but um, here in Egypt in a majority Muslim country the the vibe you get is totally different um, you know you ha you actually have a vacation for Eid you know you have a holiday like 10 12 days um, you know my class you know officially is, is off from today you know if I were back home you know if you know if I were going uh, to class or school, you know, chances are I'd have to miss my class or school because of, um, you know, Eid. And we find that uh, this is a reality which um, most Muslims face in, in, the, in the States and I'm sure um, other parts of the world as well. So over here you have that feeling of, you know, this is our holiday. You know, we are Muslims. Uh, wherever you go, you see people greeting each other with, you know, Kulu Sanan Tayyib, you know, wish you the best. Uh, you know, every year um, have a happy Eid and so forth. So you get that, you know, really that Eid and joy, that feeling. 
because at the end Eid means celebration it means you know happiness and joy yeah. so if we're you know not feeling that joy then that's you know kind of defeats the purpose the spirit of Eid so alhamdulillah I've been really um, you know seeing that you know that Eid flavor if you if you will here in Egypt um, you know walking on the you know on the streets you see like you know uh, here and there you see like herds of shepherds with their sheep and you know their cattle um, this you never see you know back in the states yeah. um, you know let alone you know the streets but you know you don't even get to see the see the, those in the farms uh, as much so alhamdulillah you know you get that you know that Eid, Eid al-Adha uh, feeling as well seeing the, the animals and uh, I think uh, for children especially growing up uh, you know raising them with you know the Islamic teachings um, it's, it's a great feeling because they get to see it with their own eyes and not just read it in books and you know kind of live it for just a day or two uh, an important aspect that he brought up uh, of course the, the sheep and, uh, and the sacrifice is another you know symbolism of uh, this time in, in Eid and, and sacrifice uh, can you tell us uh, share with us uh, the the symbolism behind uh, the sacrifice. I mean, we are asked to sacrifice for the sake of Allah. And, uh, for example, fasting. You're fasting, you're, you're, you're not eating, and you're not doing something that you, know, you normally do for the sake of Allah. Uh, and again, people tend not to focus on this meaning. What meaning should we be looking for when it comes to the slaughtering of uh, the, the sheep? Uh, tomorrow. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam, alhamdulillah. Two things come to my mind. Um, one is the beautiful story of uh, Ibrahim and his obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his willingness mm -hmm. to relinquish something he loved dearly for Allah and his tarbiyah upon his son when his son learned what he was getting ready to do, he said, don't worry about me. Allah commanded you to do this. I'm good with it. Do what you've been commanded. Do what you were to, commanded to, to do. This is the perfect father and the perfect son relationship. Mm -hmm. That the tarbiyah had gone into the son that went past the father back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is... Uh, you know, the ayah in, the, I believe, Surah to Hajj, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that the, the flesh and the blood don't reach Him. You know, because the uh, Mushrikeen used to wipe the blood on the, on the Kaaba mm. as, a, as a way to, to signify their devotion. So, you know, this, these animals that this, uh, you know, the word Qurbani, the thing to get us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. You know, the sacrifice, our intent. And as you just said, the symbol behind it, the meaning behind it. You know, to, you know, sure, eat some of it, but give it away to those who, who really will benefit from it. And all of this gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. Brother Mustafa. Yes. Uh, I believe, like, well, one more time I'd like to comment on the... Uh, I, I remember whenever the, I, I, the word sacrifice is mentioned, I remember the, the situation when Prophet Abraham was going to slaughter his son Ishmael. And, in, and like we were talking about the family ties and so on. You know, like the, the love that you have towards your father and the love that your father ha has towards you. You know, like when, when, when Prophet Abraham like, had this absolute obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slaughter his son, then he, he speaks to his son, and then his son surprised him with the answer. If you just feel this situation, it's, it's completely different. We sometimes hear the story, but think about getting your story. son and slaughtering it. You can't slaughter a human being. How about your son? So, and, uh, and he was ready to sacrifice, to sacrifice his own son after a long time of, of being deprived from a, from a son. Actually, Prophet Abraham had uh, Ishmael after a long time, like he was, uh, I think, like he was very old when he got Prophet uh, Ishmael. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to sacrifice this after this long time, after patience and patience to get a son. Then he had the son, and then when the son was at the age 
like of 12 or something when he became like the, the best time where you would love to play with your son and speak to him and so on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to to uh, to slaughter his son and then all he said is yes to this order and he tried to test his 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 son by asking him what do you think about this he wanted to hear the 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 word of obedience from him he didn't want yes. to order him yes uh, yes so he, he wanted to test him and to see like to, to he wanted to hear that word yes from him not to order him and it came definitely you do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do but not just this uh, he also gave him some advice while he was slaughtering him he told him when you slaughter me do not look in my eyes just slaughter me from the back so you do not like feel like he, of course like yes. every father has the mercy so Allah, he, he, he tell us he, he told him like many he gave him advice how to slaughter him and it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this that, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered him to slaughter uh, a sheep instead of, of his son. And now sacrificing a sheep is, is definitely much, much easier than sacrificing your own son. But one more time, it's symbolism and it's, it, it's obedience one more time and, and, and being submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are ordering me to do this, I do it. A slaughter, a slaughter, I do it. It's, it's absolute obedience one more time. Yes. It's the symbol of what Prophet Abraham yes. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did a long time ago. I can make a little comment. We have, before you make the comment, uh, we have Dr. Uh, Fuad uh, from Saudi He is a previous presenter on Huda, uh, on Huda TV. And, uh, we hear he's with us on the telephone. Dr. Fahad, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Good, sir. Good morning, to khair. Oh, and to be khair. Welcome to the program where uh, we're talking about uh, the day of, uh, of Arafah. Uh, can you tell us how the, uh, the things are over there in Saudi Arabia? Okay, well, um, this year I've chosen to do Hajj uh, by myself, me along with a friend from my country, his name is Muaz. So we are here doing Hajj the real way with everyone, not with any uh, of the Hajjis or anything, we're doing Hajj on the ground. So we're kind of um, experiencing all the walks of uh, people, I mean, from different countries, we're sitting with them, we're talking with them, like we spend our day night, the day of Karuya in the state in uh, Mina. And now we, we've walked uh, um, to Arafa. On the way we took a, a motorcycle ride as well. But um, there are, alhamdulillah, there have been a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, there is not a space on the earth that you could see, a part of the street that you could see empty, except that there is someone there in Ekram and uh, doing the Salvia. The, uh, are, you, are you finding any, any, any hardships over there? At, uh, today? Um, uh, to be honest, uh, the, the, the weather is a bit hotter. Um, you see some of the people, I mean, it's affecting them. But generally, yeah, I mean, even if you want to call it hardship, it's erased by the feeling of getting closer to Allah. Everyone has that uh, feeling of um, it's a chance to start a new page in their life. Um, so I think if you want to even if you ask the, the, the Hajji or the pilgrim that went through the utmost hardship in doing his Hajj, he would forget at the end of the day because of that, uh, of his purpose of doing the Hajj. So generally, it's not that difficult this year. Um, it's the, the crowd, I mean, there's no problem, steady flow. Um, of course, sometimes the, 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 um, the way is a bit clouded and stuff like that, but generally, it's very good, mashallah. Mashallah. May, may Allah accept from you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, advice for uh, the people over here for the day of uh, the day of Arafa who are fasting? Well, as for the Hujaj, I mean, it's the day of Dua, the day of constant uh, begging Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for forgiveness and giving, asking Him to give you a new chance uh, to start your life over again. And for the viewers who are at home, um, it's the day to make Dua for Allah to bless you to make the pilgrimage. And if you've done before, it's the day to reminisce of the day when you were here, and it would uh, help you and of course, um, encourage you towards uh, dedicating this day towards Allah. 
and I hope on uh, the Tour de TV can continue to do such coverage, inshallah. Um, I hope that you guys will come here and do the program live one day, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Ustaz Fahad, Jazakumullah khair for the phone call. Uh, and uh, ha, uh, inshallah, you have a, a wonderful uh, day at Warafah and Eid, inshallah. And uh, we'll speak with you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, coming back to our uh, theme, guys, you had, before we left, we were speaking about right. the sacrifice of uh, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi uh, salam, and, and the symbolism behind all this, uh, and you had something to share with us. Right, yes. um, just uh, commenting on uh, Brother uh, Mustafa, what he said um, about Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and sacrificing his son. Uh, this is something which I um, learned recently. It's it's more of a, a linguistic uh, explanation to the whole uh, history behind uh, Ibrahim and his sacrifice. Um, we know the word al hadi. Al hadi, the Arabic word, is used to um, it's referring it's referring to the the animal that you sacrifice. So um, I was thinking, you know, why al hadi guidance? So then my uh, teacher said that when Ibrahim alayhi salam was about to slaughter his son Ismail, Allah accepted that sacrifice and replaced it and guided him to the ram. Thus, we call this sa sacrificial animal Al-Hadi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam at that time. So I found that to be really uh, profound. And the comment on uh, the whole sacrifice itself and like Ibrahim alayhi salam seeing it in his dream and then going to his son. Like, this is a beautiful father-son relationship. I mean, father has a dream and goes and shares it with his son. I mean, nowadays you have fathers, you know, you know they're so busy. Sons, you know, they're you know, trying to avoid their fathers. They don't have that, you know, that bond, that relationship. So he goes and says, Ya Bunayya, inni ara fil manam, anni adbahuk, fanzur madha tara. That, oh my son, I saw in my dream that I was slaughtering you. What do you have to say about that? So the reply amazing son, amazing father, amazing son. The tarbiyah is all there. And both question and answer were so beloved to Allah that it's recorded in the Qur'an, إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ So the son replies, يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ What you were commanded to do. Carry out what you were commanded to do. He didn't say carry out what you saw in your dream. He said carry out what you were ordered to do. Because he knew that my father is a prophet and what he sees in his dream is inspiration, guidance, instruction from Allah. So carry out what you were ordered to do. Satajiduni insha'Allah min al-sabirin. And you will find me among those who are patient. Yes, so in, the, in this you know, difficult test, this you know, sensitive moment, both father and son display such tawakkul in Allah and, and strength of iman. It's just you know, uh, you know, profound for you know, all of us really to you know, look at and, and, and follow. And this is what we learn in, 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 in this beautiful season of Hajj. Allah. I think one of the, uh, the main things that, uh, especially about sacrifice and especially about the story is people forget how long ago Ibrahim was. This is thousands and thousands of years ago. And, you know, people can't even imagine, you know, the 40s and the 50s or, <laughs> or the, the 1800s or the 1700s uh, or the, the time of the Prophet and this is thousands of years before that. There's a new meaning to old school. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And to have this symbol carry through yes. this entire time and be the best example, be the best example of this father and son relationship, best example of someone sacrificing for the sake of Allah and carrying through and asked to imitate it. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, one of the, the lectures I was attending is that he was saying that, okay, if you truly want to, you know, sacrifice, you should sacrifice what you love. So find something that you love, for example, like, you know, you just bought a new cell phone. Can you really let go of that cell phone to some ran random person that might need it more than you? Like, it, if you, can you really test yourself and see if you can give it up for the sake of Allah? And it's, a, it's, really, it's something really practical, right? And it really s shows you something about yourself. Yes. Because uh, it's, you, know, you tend to love the things that you have and, and things of that nature. Not even your children or your family. We're talking about material things mm -hmm. that you could lose at any time anyway. But letting go of it 
is is you know that's the real test that it's showing you, and, and that this is the best example of such a test. And this it reminded me of always listening to this, and you know when I come to a situation and I have something, and I'm like, am I really willing to part with this, you know, uh, for the sake of Allah, uh, let alone something even more drastic than that? Because if you can't let go of the little things. Are you are you going to be able to sure, to, to to have it uh, th more than that? I remember one of our shayuk made a humorous point from this sacrifice, and he said that many times, many of us, when we're asked to give, we go in our wallet, we open our wallet, we look for the most wrinkled, <laughs> oldest <laughs> bill with the lowest denomination, and give that, and. In contrast to that, someone who really has to walk on Allah, there was uh, one of the people of knowledge in the Emirat, and uh, he was also a businessman. Mm. And people, when they saw him, they had the opportunity to see them. If they were in need, they would ask him, because they knew he would respond. He was Mujib. He would answer quickly and with their need. And uh, he, and this is a, a very verified condition of this man. He would reach his hand in his pocket and would give you whatever he had. If he had, you know, a few dirham, you would give a few dirham. But if he would have several thousand dirham, he would give you what he had. Mashallah. And this is a. Uh, you know, we hear these stories about sacrifice, and we hear these stories about people doing acts of ibadah to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, all of these things, you know, can, can be combined in the multiple blessings that we see on this day that Allah boasts to the malaika. He boasts. At the end of the day, do you see that these people, they are sitting on rocks and they're dirty? As you said, their hair is disheveled. And what did they do? They came to seek my forgiveness. And Allah boasts about this, this ubudiyah, hmm. that the only thing they had in mind this day, they, as the doctor just said, is hot. You know, it's it's Vuhur at Arafat, and the sun is at its peak, and there's no trees out there. Mm -hmm. But the people won't move until sundown because they want the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the other aspects of, of our Buddha that I want to point out is that for certain things that we just do as, um, as commanded, for example, zakat, you know, 2.5, you know, you calculate that and you give it up. But Allah Azzawajal gives us opportunities that have no limits, Yes. right? So, and these are the best kind of opportunities. The day of Arafah, for example, over there, you know, there's no, there is a time limit for the day, but it doesn't restrict you from, you know, how many dots you can make, what you can ask for. Yes. You can ask for anything and, you know, and for the people who are fasting, right, you can, there's no limit to how much you can spend. You know, this is, this is a time for you, it's an opportunity. So people who understand the idea of opportunity, right, they will take advantage of that opportunity. So it's not restricted just to, you know, uh, an amount. So if you spend truly, you know, as the, as the brother you were mentioning, who takes thousands of, uh, of dirhams and, and gives it wherever is in his pocket, he's taking advantage of an opportunity. No. Uh, so the, the difference is, one is, you know, specific, and people just might do it because it's, uh, it's known and it's, you know, it's practiced. As opposed to the open, uh, then there's no restrictions to it. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants to see, okay, how much, you know, how much are you willing to to give or sacrifice or do for my sake, as is uh, exemplified on the day of Arafah. Uh, the 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 last thing I want to say about the day of Arafah, and I I went in 2002 uh, approximately. Um, I do remember that it was it was hot, um, and because of the time, the uh, you know how it goes back every uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know ten days. Yeah. Uh, so 
I think it was it was even hotter then, right? So uh, <laughs> what happened was we would sit there and you know some people went back to down down to where we were where they were sitting in the camp and stuff, and some people were staying on the mountain and. Every time I would go, and I'm like, okay, wait, no, it's it's still it's still time, you know, you can you can hold it out longer. You see other people who are older, and you know, going down from the mountain and stuff like that, and you know, one replacing the other, and, and, uh, and I'm like, well, no, I'm younger. How could this person stay longer than me? You know, it was kind of like it, people motivated each Enough other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, it, and one of the ideas that it was, if I, if I was there by myself, I probably wouldn't have stayed that. You know, as long as you know, I had because you're there with these people, and they're like pushing each other, you know, to do to do better and to take advantage. And you see somebody making vic more than you, and you're like, you know, you got you get tired, you you know, your throat hurts, and you're like, no, no, you gotta you gotta take advantage. You know, you're, it's a once in a year, once in a lifetime situation. Right. You can't focus on the heat. You can't focus on the you know those aspects of it. Um, if uh, <coughs> Who ha- who here has, has made uh, Hajj? Did not. Uh, Unfortunately, I haven't. Been you have uh, I have the. I think like one more time, I will take the uh, the word of uh, Sheikh Zaid. Z- 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 I, I really have to make the intention. I really have to make the intention because I remember a story that one day there was a man who had the money. He saved the money for Hajj. He saved, saved, and saved, and he had the money for Hajj. And then. He, he met someone, also this is related to giving the money to the poor and the needy. He met someone who was really in need for money. He was really, he, he, uh, I think he or she, she was a widow, I can't remember the details, but he, he was in need of, for, for that money. So he gave all the money to that man and then he returned back. So the, you know, the key, he was going with a group of people and then he just gave the money and he stayed, he went home and he, like he said, this is for Allah and, and that's it. And then when the group of people who were going with them, they came back and they told him, we saw you everywhere there, performing different rites, the, all the rites of, of pilgrimage. Mm. So uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, made like order an angel to perform the pilgrimage for him because of what he did. No. So it's like having the intention is, is, is the fastest step that yes. everyone should, you know, should make. Like uh, now I, I have the intention that, okay, I can start saving now, now, from today. Like, as, as Sheikh said, like, just the cookies that you buy. Just save, save a bit. Like you still have, like, if I'm 24 now, so let's say even, like, when I'm uh, 34 or something, after 10 years, if I save, like, f- f- two pounds every day, maybe I can, I can make it. Inshallah, may Allah. Just like you, you, the example you gave, you didn't give us the details, but how it miraculously happened for you. Mm. You know, it's there's so many of these stories. Before we we continue, we have a, a message from Brother Malik. Okay. Uh, right now, it's it's uh, it's almost uh, the the khutbah of Arafah, so he'd like to uh, uh, connect with us, Brother Malik. Salam alaikum. We're gonna go to a we're gonna go to a video. It's a video message from Brother Malik. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome, dear Huda TV viewers, to Huda TV's extended coverage of Hajj 1433 after Hijrah, that is 2012. As you can see behind me, millions and millions of pilgrims continue to make their way to this blessed place, Arafah, at this blessed time, the day of Arafah, the ninth of the month of their Hijrah, to ask their Lord for forgiveness, for repentance. It's a beautiful, emotional, and electric atmosphere. I certainly hope that you all at home will be with me next year, inshallah, here covering Hajj with Huda TV. As you see behind me, as we mentioned, there are millions and millions of pilgrims, all dressed in the garments that I'm wearing now. Two simple pieces of white cloth on the upper and lower part of your body. It's truly an amazing experience. And, uh, and kudos goes to the KSA government who has arranged and organized this in such a really amazing manner. We have millions and millions of pilgrims from all around the world. Indonesia, Bangladesh, the Arab world, Africa, Europe, and yes, the United States of America. Many of them do not comprehend the language spoken by the other groups. However, the KSA government has arranged this in such a way that it has gone incredibly smoothly. Really, it's really a truly amazing uh, experience. We are waiting 
for the estimates for the KSA government to release them soon, inshallah, to see the estimated number of pilgrims in this Hajj, uh, inshallah. Now let's get back to Hajj. As you know, the authentic hadith related by the Prophet, peace be upon him, Hajj is Arafah, and you can truly feel it here today. We are waiting to listen to the khutbah in the mosque behind me, of course, inshallah, soon. Uh, we are all gathering here for that uh, brief reminder, inshallah, and we will report back to you after that uh, uh, as well. There are millions and millions of pilgrims here. It truly is an indescribable feeling. It truly is a feeling of brotherhood, you can say, camaraderie, forgiveness, and mercy between Muslim brothers. All year long, my dear Hood TV viewers, perhaps we criticize each other and ourselves. But today you can feel the mercy and the forgiveness in the air. You can feel the love between Muslim people all year long. Perhaps we have many, many, many differences between ethnicities and linguistic differences as well. But today, without doubt, the unity of Islam is on clear display, on clear display. The Hajj as an equalizer is on clear display display today. No no civilization, no no civilization can really bear, bear witness, everyone should bear witness to this great event of Hajj, this annual convention of millions of people throughout the world come together all equal. We don't know who today who is a doctor or who is a janitor. Everyone today is equal. Everyone today is wearing these basic humble pilgrims clothing. And a note on the, the feeling of Hajj that I'm feeling now as well is you feel humbleness wearing these clothes in a sense of brotherhood amongst your Muslim brothers and sisters who have gathered here today from all around the world. Many of us would like to take vacations in countries like Greece or Turkey perhaps, but today after being here today, my dear viewers, you feel a sense of, of energy, something that you would, that makes you want to return here year uh, after year. If you can take a look behind me and see the millions of pilgrims making their way here today, it truly is uh, an amazing experience. It's, it's amazing. It's electric. You have to be here to really, to really, to really be able to understand how special this moment is. Just imagine, my dear viewers, millions and millions of people gathered in one place in one time, asking the Lord for one thing, the same thing. That is for forgiveness, forgiveness for their sins, asking for forgiveness for their family, for their mother, for their father, for their children, for their spouses uh, as well. It truly is a, a special time that can't be described. As we continue speaking here, as we continue recording and covering Hodge 2012, that is 1433, more and more pilgrims arrive. You can see the, the full-size buses coming behind me and they keep pouring and pouring in. They've been pouring in since the 7th really of the Hujjah at night. The pilgrims began to make their way to Mina. Mina as well was an amazing scene yesterday. The tense city there organized by country, organized. And another note uh, to the KSC government who has arranged tent city in such a beautiful way, organized by country. Uh, the, the tents fireproof, of course, equipped with desert coolers uh, as well. If you can see the train behind me as well, which was established in order and created to take over half a million pilgrims in a three-minute, uh, three-day period, uh, the, 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 the highest capacity train in the entire world, higher than Hong Kong, higher capacity than Hong Kong, uh, that is. My dear Huda TV viewers, stay tuned to Huda TV. We will listen to the khutbah, inshallah, soon, and we will report back, inshallah, after the khutbah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed that uh, message uh, from Brother Malik. Uh, welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, we have uh, uh, Sheikh Zayed and Brother Zakir and Brother Mustafa with us. And we're talking about the day of Arafah. And as you saw, uh, Brother Malik, who I know personally for a few years now, and he's been looking forward to Hajj for a long time. So you see how many times he's used the word amazing. <laughs> he used it so often. Because it truly is... Uh, an amazing experience when you go there. So uh, you can you can automatically tell that when you uh, look at his face and the way he's describing it, and how many people he's he's around them. And even though it's millions of people, he still finds it you know this amazing feeling of unity and and, and oneness and you know uh, living out you know tawheed and brotherhood and this connection. Uh, may Allah accept from the Hajjaj and Brother Malik. I mean. Uh, I mean, and we were sharing here some uh, stories uh, for Hajj or aspirations of going to Hajj and how one should prepare for Hajj. And uh, the Sheikh wanted to share a story with us. Uh, Go ahead. No, I was just wanting to make the comment that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the watching Huda TV and other Islamic mediums like it, I think is doing such a 
you know, a game-changing uh, paradigm for making people see and experience and feel in a different way. Yeah. You know, because in the past, before there was this this development of Islamic media, you'd see some hujaj come back, you know, and you would have a conversation with them. They tell you, you know, maybe stories at dinner. Yeah. But now you can sit in front of your TV and you watch this live. And it just, this week, because I had, you know, I really had planned to go this year. Mm. And because it's so expensive from Egypt, you know, there's this, there's this hyperinflated price and only Allah knows why. But I tried different venues to, to make it happen, but it didn't. Mm. And, but the first part of this week, it was like torture, watching, mm. you know. But then the torture turned into the sweetness of seeing that Allah had favored so many that came from not rich places, but poor places. Yes. And from different means, and I, I, I don't have, you know, any way to know the individual stories, but just think, among all of those hujaj today, there are millions of stories, unique stories, mm -hmm. about the ni'mah from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. in favoring them for hajj. Sometimes this is the tenth story of hajj for someone. The first story after 70 or 80 years old for someone. But each one of them is unique and has a lesson in it for all of us. And, you know, my lesson for me has been to, you know, transform my feeling of, of almost a little bit of depression into hope and from hope into determination. That I'll correct the thinking errors mm. and the apparent barriers like the twelve thousand dollars it costs to fly two hours from Egypt <laughs> 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 which, which really just kind of angered me as well Absolutely. they were so inflated that you know you know I could fly back to New York <coughs> meet up with uh, the brothers from Al, Al, Al Basira uh -huh. And fly with them, and fly back to New York, and fly back to Egypt, and save six thousand dollars. But Allah must die. Allah must die. But you know, <coughs> it, it it really has you know being on Huda TV twice this week, and having this experience of talking about Hajj with you brothers, who I've never met before, and we're all on the same note, the same page, right. you know. It's, it's really made me think, you know, just because there has been a price hike, you know, I shouldn't look at that as a definitive no. Absolutely. That's an encouragement for me to be creative and do it, look at it in another way. And if that's what it takes, $12,000, somebody or some place is going to relinquish twelve thousand dollars for me this next year, inshallah. inshallah. So it is it's kind of given me the encouragement, you know, to not take no as no, but no as uh, to be, you know, mutahamis about going to Hajj next year, inshallah. And I haven't met anybody that has gone and spent a lot of money who comes back and complains that it was too expensive. <laughs> so uh, I think even if you spend twice that much, once you actually, before, before you go, you might complain that yes. it's too much, right? But once you actually experience it, you're like it was, it was yes. totally worth it, yes. totally worth it. And uh, especially because it's a mile marker in your life. I mean, it's, it's one of the, the yes. pillars of Islam. And it, once you reach that, you know, marker, yes. it, it's, a, it's a different, you know, you're in a different level now, yeah. uh, spiritually. Yes. Uh, and, you know, you don't look at things the, the, same, the same way anymore. And, of course, this is not in the, in the West where they give you a title, but here they give you, you know, you become known as, you know, Hajj, right? So you've, you've reached this, like, this, you know, stage in your life where 
you know, it's a badge of honor that you've gone there, you've, you know, you've experienced this. It's a tremendous thing. Um, one of the issues that, you know, you, you hinted at was uh, the price and uh, the truly, you know, poverty in this world. People really don't, uh, you know, have an idea how poor people yeah. and how many poor people uh, are. Uh, on this on this planet, and it, uh, I think I read a statistic the other day that if you eat, if you have a, you know three courses a day, you know, you, you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're part of the the the, the uh, richest fifteen percent of the world. Right. That that to me was profound. Right. That just having three meals a day is not everybody's having that. Let, let alone it's just fifteen percent. So you can imagine it's not just it's not it's fifty percent. Right. So, um, and uh, you're from Egypt, brother, yes. and <coughs> of course there's, there's poverty everywhere. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what can we do to, uh, besides giving sadaqa, uh, and of course Allah Azawajal has made it, you know, our duty to help uh, mm -hmm. these, uh, <coughs> these people. What, what else can be done in, in this type of society? And I'll ask uh, the brother about New York. Actually, uh, the, the, what you said about besides giving sadaqah, because actually giving sadaqah, when you give someone like some money, let's say 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 100 pounds, just this will run out after like one week. But the, the, what, what we actually need is a long-term development, long-term mm -hmm. development. We, we need something like projects. We need, some, we need to invest. We need something like for, for a poor family. It's better if you just help them by giving them. Yes, well, Jazakumullah khair for the insight, and, uh, and I completely agree. Uh, we had to cut because over there they're starting the khutbah, the khutbah of Arafah. We take you now uh, to uh, the khutbah in Arafah, and stay tuned for afterwards. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>